Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 100 Days of Hardcore Arc Survival Evolved here on Velgaro. Hey yo, what's up? Just a couple of mentions before we go. Luke the Notable for the 100 Days idea and to you, the Arc community, for all the help and for making this really awesome. Thank you. Anyways, what are we waiting for? Let's get into it. Here we go. So it's day one and I spawned in Beach Zone 2, ready to take on Valgirl. But first, I need an appearance change. Just a sec. Oh, baby. Anybody ever tell you that I have beautiful eyes? Huh? Anyways, with head, I grabbed a couple of uh, necessities, which we always do at the beginning. A couple tools, some weapons, and some armor. Oh yeah, I also went ahead and tamed this beautiful Jeboa, so I wouldn't be lonely for the first night. Then I had to find a good spot for us to place base. Most of you might remember this from the post I made on our community post. If you didn't, do mind you! This is where I chose to build my first base out of thatch. It was a good day, good day. Day 2 had arrived and building throughout the night gave me a couple of levels. So I went out to collect some resources to craft a couple more things. I got myself some bowlers and a bow and arrow. I also decided to go ahead and tame a compi. Note that I was using better dinos so it had a special power and I wanted to see what it was. I tried just about everything that I could think of but it just didn't work. I uh, never tamed a compi before so I didn't know what it would need. Um, yeah, I scrapped that idea. I then turned my attention on taming a parasaur. Seems like a good starter dino but I only served that up for lunch. To a raptor! Uh, yeah, Cams. I think now's a good time for us to turn around and slowly walk away. Walk away, Cams. That's right, walk away. I later got what I was looking for. Yeah, we found a decent level parasaur and we tamed it. What else can I say? Don't give up! Day 3! Well, I wasn't really feeling comfortable at this uh, location. There were a whole lot of raptors spawning in this area, so I needed to get out ASAP. Patrick and I went out for a journey. A journey to the middle of nowhere, trying to get as far away as possible from this location. And yeah, I found the perfect spot. Well, it seemed like it, because there were these huge freaking herbivores all around us. Definitely would protect us from many of those uh, Carnivores, so I was quite happy with this place. Uh, I then went ahead and built my uh, second base, which sort of looked like a little fishing cabin. It looked really good and cozy. Don't you think? Day 4 wasn't that all great. I just went ahead and grabbed a couple of things. I went and got my forge. Got some metal. Waited for that to smelt. So then I could get my smithy. Got another sort of smithy. And then I was able to get some metal tools. Yeah, I was busy. Day 5. Patrick and I were out and about. I was looking for a raptor to tame. Something that would help us along the way. Luckily, I knew the perfect spot to find these uh, little scrapes. And lo and behold... We did find a group of raptors. What they didn't know is that I had bowlers. So taming one of them wasn't that difficult. What I didn't know is that there was an aggroed Dodicarus. Now that really spoiled things. And so in the midst of everything, I had to leave this area and search for another raptor. And boy, did I find myself another raptor. A decent level tech raptor. Make no mistake now, this one's gonna be mine. Here we go. What a beauty find. Day six, while starting about with my raptor, I spotted this beauty right here and I wanted to take it. So I tried. Yeah, well, that didn't work out so well. These things are pretty smart. Besides, it was a modded dino as well. I didn't know what it would need, or how much of tranks it would take to knock it down. So I did the sensible thing. I uh, beat up some random tree. Uh, okay, a lot. Maybe two. Nah, I went ahead and built a taming pen. Yeah, this worked. We knocked out the trike! D7! I found the trike's special ability. I'm not sure if this was intended, highly doubt it, but this was a super thatch collecting machine. I don't know how, but I uh, stumbled upon it. Anyways, I was in the business of getting some flyers. I had the levels to unlock its saddle, so Pateras or what we needed. I went ahead and found a few. We were able to knock them out. Though, trying to get prime meat? Now that was something. It almost cost me my life. I, I don't know 
what was going on there and how I survived it. But we survived. We were able to tame both our pteranodons that day. J8 peeps, I spotted this max level pteranodon. Of course, I was gonna tame it. So we bowled it, attracted it, and then went out looking for some prime meat or some mutton. Wait. How did this happen? Oh, this is the raptor we knocked out the other day. I see. Anyways, we got two raptors and a 150 pteranodon. I like that. Day 9, I started breeding my pateras in the hopes of getting something that is decent. As we all know, pteranodons really suck. There's no other way to say it. Although, I don't take this breeding thing seriously. I just need something that's gonna work for me. And if it doesn't, well then, we have backups. So either way, we win. Day 10! I finally figured out how to tame these darn compies. Apparently, they just needed prime meat. Ah, uh, darn it. These things are freaking beasts. Look at what they just do to this little turtle. Oh, what a creep. So much carnage. Brace yourself. Oh, man. They're just so cool. Moving on, I needed to get some crystals. I knew of a place so where I could get some from my previous gameplay, which was a couple years ago. I don't know. It wasn't that far away from us and not too dangerous. I just needed to kite a carno away, grab some crystals, and make my spyglass. That's what I needed. Ah, oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh well, time to get down to some business. So, I went ahead to craft a taming pen. Why I craft said taming pen? Because there was a tech ankylo somewhere around us. So, uh, I wanted to tame it. We built our taming pen and kited the Yankee in. I then proceeded to trank it, knock it down, and watch this beautiful scenery whilst it tamed up. This is the life. Day 12, our Anki finally tamed up, so I decided to take it for a little test run. A little improvements here and there, but it was certainly strong enough to take on a tech stagger. I then had a problem to solve. There were these brontos all around us. They were getting in my personal space. I decided to build a fence around my base. Yeah, I, I saw these fence thingamabobsies that I haven't used before. Uh, certainly looked like a good thing to do. Yeah, that was the thought. Day 13. Yeah, I took on a big task. I'm still busy with my fence build. Besides, I also wanted to figure out what kind of fence look I was going for. That was the other biggie I needed to uh, finalize. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna get back to building my fence. Do mind me. See ya! Day 14, I finally completed my fence. It wasn't perfect, but it would do the job. That's the most important thing here. I then went ahead to grab a couple of resources by hitting down some of the beaver dams and crafting my fabricator. Boom! Day 15, I needed to get some organic polymer. Luckily, I knew exactly where to get it. And it wasn't that difficult either. I also had to get a couple more resources to craft this Valerian rain. If that's how you pronounce it. It's supposed to give a buff to flyers. And I wanted to try it out, of course. Because I had a pteranodon. What I found whilst equipping this to my pteranodon is that it greatly increased its stamina which is something this pteranodon lacks so it's quite grateful for that i also grabbed a couple more resources and flew to the green arby where i crafted my first cryopod now that will greatly help us in our quest to survive the 100 days day 16 i had enough resources to craft myself a full set of flak gear i then realized that there was a dynonicus nest just behind my very first base i also had a good strategy in mind my little compy had some little compy friends. So yeah, we had a good distraction for those Deinonychus. And I was able to swoop down and easily grab myself a Deinonychus egg. I then flew back to base and crafted a whole lot of standing torches. Where I spent the rest of my time hatching my Deinonychus egg. Day 17, now with my Deinonychus hatched, I just needed to wait for it to mature. I also needed to go out and get it some meat so it wouldn't starve out. I then went and collected some of the resources needed to craft its saddle. Once all of that was done, I was able to take my Deinonychus for a little test run. Did you know that we had rideable Dilos in this mod? 
Hmm? Neither did I. I only found this out while I was looking through my engrams. So, of course, instinctively, I set out to tame a dilo that we could ride. Thing is, it needed to be a certain size. I found that out whilst taming my first dilo. It didn't make the cut. But eventually, we were able to find a ginormous dilo and take it out. I mean, just, just look at this. It's so cool. I'm on a freaking dilo. It's just insane. Day 18, it was time to step it up a bit, so I went out and crafted a stone taming pen. Why? Because we needed some RGs. Yes, and I knew the perfect location and where I could find myself a load of RGs. Lo and behold, there were tons of them, and I was able to spot a high level dodgy. I then needed to find a spot to place down my taming pen. Now, playing on Valgaro, there are many flat spots here, so that was difficult. I then went ahead and placed down my taming pen, kited the 130 yard and Tavis then, I was able to trank it and knock it out and then grab it some prime meat. Day 19 I was back at my RG location, I did see another high leveled RG that I could tame, which would be a perfect mate for my uh, RG that I already have, so I mean, you can put two and two together, yeah, I had to tame it. We kited it in my taming pen and was able to knock it out, wasn't that difficult, yeah. It is good as ours right now. Seriously, we got it, man. Day 20, it was RG breeding time. We just breeded a whole lot of RG eggs and hatched a whole lot of RG eggs, hoping to get an RG with some decent stats. You know what? I think this one looks good. I think I'm gonna keep it. Yeah, I think I might. Day 21, so now that I had a whole lot more weight, I could carry a whole lot more resources. So I went out and gathered a couple more resources to craft a couple more cryopods. Oh yeah, I also did some more RG egg hatching. Yeah, pretty cool. Day 22, now that we had an RG, I could really ramp up our progress. So I went ahead and crafted an area where I could place down a couple of refining forges. Of course, you know what I wanted to do here oh yeah a metal grind was in order day 23 oh looky looky what i just found i've never seen such a high giga before you know what gotta keep this in mind but anyways i remember whilst playing this map way back then that there was a cave that a mate of mine had shown me that has some cool cave drops that we could check out and get some cool items off of it so i wanted to do that today just to mix things up a bit so i eventually found the cave and well we got some really cool things off of it as well there was also an artifact which at this point in time i didn't know if i needed but i took it in any case why not because we were there right i mean all this cool loot, plus an artifact, plus 140 giga that we just saw. It was the perfect day, man. Perfect day. Day 24, I decided it was time for us to tame some gatherers. Just to help us in the days ahead, I went ahead and grabbed myself a beaver and took it back to base, where I tranked and knocked it out. And then journeyed to the far corner of the map, where I knew there were a couple of dodecarists that spawned there. I was able to find a decent level one and bring it back to base, where I tranked and knocked out this dodecarist. And then waited for both of them to tame up of course. Day 25, now that my gatherers were all tamed up, I needed to get them their saddles. So that's what I did today, I went ahead to grab the resources to craft their saddles. I also started working on my raft. Now, if you didn't know, I did post on my community post of this specific raft, so some of you might know where I'm going with this. But of course, I needed to start with crafting the raft itself. I also played around with the attachments for the raft that came with this mod, but to me, it didn't really make that much of a difference. Well, at least I gave it a shot. Day 26, I continued working on my raft. I was trying to visualize how I was going to build this uh, raft. Of course, it was going to be a taming pen for a specific dino that I was aiming to trap with this raft. I then went ahead to gather some of the resources needed to craft this raft. We needed cementing paste, so I hit down some of the beaver dams and then went ahead and gathered some metal. Day 27, continuing with our dino napper build, I started fortifying our raft with some metal structures. 
Oh, you know this is going to be a crazy build. Especially if we're using metal structures. That's madness. By day 28 we were like 80% done with our Dino Napper build. And by now it was looking really cool. It looked like it could trap something really, really huge. A couple of uh, small little dinos as well. But anyways, we needed more resources. And the only way to get resources was for me to wait. Because I needed the metal to smelt. And whilst that was on the go, I went ahead and gathered some more resources. Just to keep myself busy, got loads of cementing paste, then some metal. Day 29, I was finally done with my Dino Napper build. I must say, it came out quite cool. And I did a little adjustments here and there, because I wasn't really sure how it will react with the Giga that I was about to tame. I then was on my way to the Giga location, which was a very long way away from us. And this raft was, uh, very very slow so it took some time we eventually arrived at the giga location that afternoon with some daylight left over i thought it was a good idea to at least try and get the giga as close to the raft as possible and so the challenge began that's it come on over follow me follow me this way this way oh oh not, not too close jeez oi this way please <laughs> darn it Ah, you know what? This has to be it. We got it. We got the freaking Giga. Come on. Just go for it. Go. F Frick. You gotta be kidding me. Caught you walking a straight freaking line. <laughs> ah, here we go again. Ha. The good news is, of the trying and trying, the trying got the freaking Giga in our taming pen. Yeah. We got Rex too. So I had to take care of this Rex because it was causing some trouble with the Giga. I don't know if it was bravery or stupidity, but it was certainly cool. So in the early hours of day 30, I decided to set sail with my wild Giga to a safer location. I then waited for daylight. That's when I began the taming process and tracked this Giga for a very, 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 very long time until it was knocked out. I sought after some prime meat and waited for the Giga to tame up. Dude, I didn't know these things are on this map. What the actual freak? These are a godsend. I mean, uh, caving is gonna be a breeze with them, so I had to tame one. And I knew how to tame one because of my Lost Island video. So, yeah, I just needed to kill everything else but the Alpha, and I began the taming process. We were in an area where it was quite safe. I didn't see anything dangerous around it. I think we took care of most of it. So... I just needed to tame this beast right here. Day 32. I just remembered that there were wyverns on the map. What? Yeah, I know. It took me a while to figure this out. Oh, well, it's never too late. Anyways, I visited the wyvern lair. And I went for the first nest with an egg that I could see. Grabbed it and flew out of there like my life depended on it. Well, actually, my life did depend on it. I thought I was safe, but uh, yeah, I started seeing them wyverns coming after me. So I was quite nervous because whilst my pteranodon is quite fast, it doesn't have good stamina. You get the picture, but I knew how to lose them wyverns. I flew low to the ground in the hopes that something else would catch their interest. And it worked! I was free! At day 33, I was on the lookout for a deodon. I needed one to help hatch and raise my wyvern egg that I just got. So, when I got one, I was able to tame it as well. Back at base, I built a boatload of standing torches, prepping up for hatching my wyvern egg. Day 34, I hatched my wyvern egg. I also had my deodon close by on passive heal to allow my wyvern to mature without wyvern milk. I then got it a whole lot of meat and went out to get some resources to craft its very own valerian brains. Think of my bopsies. Yeah, something like that. Day 35 was sort of a chill day i just stayed back at base and did some maintenance around there gathered some resources to craft a whole lot of narcotics i also went and got some meats for my dinos and then went out to look for a place to build our main base already day 36 to 41 i started working on my main base now i had a blueprint again this time around and this was by imperador games please forgive me probably pronouncing it wrong anyways yeah i got the idea or the blueprint from the video that i watched 
Now I did obviously try to make it my own. It was slightly bigger and it was slightly different to what the original build was. Now with doing this, it did make for an interesting build. Do mind me! Anyways, at the end of it all, I was able to get what I was looking for, but not yet finished, because there were so many things to do. Crazy stuff, but um, yeah, I'm happy with what I have so far. Looks great. It's gonna be even better when it's done. So, tell me, what's a base without anything but space? <laughs> Empty! Ah, counts. Really? Really? Yeah, really. Anyways, to solve this problem, I went ahead and furnished my base. We got a fabricator, some smithies, the other sort of smithy. We got some modern pestles, and then we got some storage. Day 43, it was moving day. I did not forget about my dinos, my previous base, and also the resources that I had. So I take all of that with me and move it to my main base, which would be the more permanent base. We had to do a couple of runs because there was a lot of things that we needed to carry back to our main base. It took a while, but eventually we got it done at the end of the day. And by that time, it was a sad, sad Goodbye to something we might not see again. So long, you beauty, you. Day 44 now settled probably back at our main base. I thought I'd go and visit the wyvern lair once again. We had a wyvern, but it wasn't a high level one. So I thought I would go and see if I could find myself a higher leveled wyvern egg. Yeah. <laughs> the only level I could find was a level 55. I mean, it was higher than what I had, but... <laughs> I wouldn't count it as a good egg. What else could I do? I was already there, so I grabbed the egg and ran. Or flew away. Of course, the other wyverns wouldn't catch me because I was quicker. So, yeah, it was smooth flying back to our base. Day 45. Yeah, we went on a metal run. Day 46. Yeah, it was a good time for me to start taming some bus dinos. So I opted once again to go for some wrecks as I knew they were a good choice for this type of bus fight. We'd have to deal with three of them this time around. So um, yeah, going for rexes would surely help. I had some really good taming gear. So I thought I'd go for just taming this rex without a taming pen. Turns out I was right. Got the rex down in no time. I just had to get it some prime meat and wait for it to tame up. Day 47, I spotted another Rex, a good mage for the Rex that I already tamed. And again, I opted to go for free taming here. I didn't need to build a taming pen for it because I had OP taming gear. Peekaboo! I see you! In no time, we got the Rex knocked out and went ahead to get it some prime meat. Day 48, I went out collecting some of the resources that I needed. I needed all of these resources to craft my ND Forge. Yeah! It's game time, baby! In day 49, I started working on electrifying my base. If that's even a way to say it. I don't know, but I'm just gonna use it because it sounds cool. Anyways, I opted for going green here because I found a couple of windmills from some of the drops I went for. Seemed like a good idea and it turned out perfectly well because everything was nice and neat. I couldn't see any cabling. The best part is we didn't need to worry about gas or wind speed or direction or whatever. It's day 50 and I decided to go ahead and try my first cave. Thanks to Seashell Gaming, I knew exactly what I needed to do. I also had the monkey man with me, so it made things even easier. I got through what I needed to get through and made it to the room or to the part of the cave that had the artifact. That was a bit tricky because I needed to use my grapples and I didn't know if I would aggro any of the dinos. But Luckily, we didn't. We got in there, got the artifacts, and was out before you could even say, Bob's your uncle. Day 51, I spotted another high level Rex. This time, close to our main base. Here again, I went with taming this Rex without a taming pen. This time, it took a bit longer, as there were a lot of challenges along the way, and also a lot of these little screams in the way. But eventually, we were able to knock out this Rex and waited for it to tame up. Of course, with some prime meat. Day 52. Well, I needed a couple of resources. And I found the holy grail of all crystals. 
Oh, mama, you know what it is. Anyways, this time around, I only needed a couple of resources. We needed this to craft a few ACs for my new hatching area. And also a chemistry bench. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Day 54, after finding the mother load of all crystals, you know that I'm gonna be busy for the next couple of days trying to finish up my base because we need a whole lot of greenhouse structures, a whole lot of crystals. Thankfully, we found the jackpot and off I went to gather the resources required and started working on my base. The next couple of days I was busy working on my base, as you can see, this was a really tricky build. There was a whole lot of uh, tricky snap points, which was kind of frustrating at times because I needed to get it just perfect so that everything would align properly um, let's just say at the end of it I still didn't get some of those snap points right but I mean I did the best I could and yeah this build was really resource intensive crazy stuff so much so that on day 58 i had exhausted my resources but we did go far with this so uh yeah i'll pick this up some other day right now i just need a break from all of this building so uh peace out i'm kidding i started breeding my rexes looking for a pair of rexes with the exact same stats unfortunately i had to lay off some of the rexes because they didn't cut it Day 59, whilst on my quest of getting a perfect mated pair of Rexes, I thought it would be a good idea for me to go out and get some fresh air. I went out and did some maintenance around base. I went ahead and collected some of the resources to stock up on things that we overlooked for the past couple of days. And whilst we were at it, well, let me just place this here. Yeah, seems like a good idea. Day 60, well, yeah, we're still breeding Rexes. But we are getting closer, so um, yeah, I mean, that's a good sign, right? Oh man, day 61. Let me tell you something, this was one of the craziest days ever because we went and did our next cave. And in that cave, peeps, whoa, I thought it was the end of me because uh, it got things got crazy, like really crazy. Thankfully, I had this OP freaking monkey man with me, but that wasn't a problem. There was just so many things happening there. I thought we were going to crash. I mean, uh, yeah, I... Uh, I was really worried, but <laughs> we got through that. We got through that freaking madness. We was able to go and deal with the rest of the cave. And eventually made our way towards the artifact. Day 62, we finally made a breakthrough and got a mated pair of Rexes with the stats that I prefer. We just needed for them to mature, or at least one of them to mature and start our line of boss Rexes. We also had a small bump in melee as well, but with the imprint, I think we could get over 500 for this. So uh, it's looking good for us, it's looking good. Not the best, but it's good. I know it will work. Day 63, checking out another item on our boss list was taming a UT. So we went out to find a UT. And yet again, having confidence in my taming gear, I opted to tame this UT without a taming pen. Well, for one thing, I didn't need one. The UT somehow trapped itself. Hey, as a bonus, we got the UT down and waited for it to tame up. Day 64 was a chill maintenance day. We were mostly around base, getting some of the resources that we needed, and also went for a meat run and got some food for our dinos. I then went ahead to check the cave that was close to our base to check the loot drops that was inside. And these are the items that I got from it. Not that great, but is free. Day 65 to 67. I took on another huge task. I needed to secure my base in order for me to raise up my boss Rexes. I also grew fond of this fence thingamabobsy. One thing I like about it is that I could build a leveled fence around my base and it looked good as well. Although it costs a whole lot of resources and a whole lot of time. In spite of this knowledge I was determined to complete this crazy task. Oh yeah I also had my Rexes mating in the background so yeah i had a whole lot of rex eggs to attend to day 68 i finally completed my fence build it was looking really really sharp and clean and neat everything that i love about it man i was ecstatic with this build anyways now that my base is secure i went ahead and hatched a whole bunch of rexes the only thing now is that i have to look after them whilst they mature yeah 
Great stuff! Day 69, whilst waiting for the rest of my Rexes to mature, I went out to do a meat run, because we were quite low on that. I was also able to get my Giga Saddle, and so I took it for a little test drive, just to see what kind of damage or destruction it could do. I didn't forget about the other Wyvern Egg that I got the last time around, though on day 70, I decided to hatch it. But first, we needed a couple more ACs. I had to craft a bit more and add it on to our little hatching area. I then went ahead to get some more meat. Seems like we're always needing meat. I don't know what's going on here. This is a baby factory or what? Anyways, we went back to hatching our wyvern. And guess what? We now have a mated pair of wyverns. How insane is that? Crazy! Day 71, I started breeding my wyverns. Yeah, you should have expected that, right? <laughs> uh, well, now that we had a mated pair, it's a no-brainer. Anyways, I also had a ton of Rex eggs, and I wanted to try my hand in getting some more mutations. I mean, the purple color that we got under the Rex's belly, that was amazing. I was looking for another cool color mutation. And that's why I hatched this many Rex eggs. Unfortunately, we didn't get any, so I had to clean up this mess. RIP! Day 72! I went out for some resource collecting! Yeah man, I think it's time for me to finally complete this base build. It's been taking a very, very, very long time. Things need to happen. Day 73! I put on the final touches for our base build. This is exactly what I had in mind and I can't believe how amazing this looks. I mean, just just take a look at this beauty. It's crazy. So awesome. I'm really chuffed with what I have done here. We mixed and matched the bases, but uh, turned out B-E-A. Beautiful. Day 74, I was off to get our lost artifact for the boss fight. Actually, this artifact was in the wyvern lair. It wasn't that difficult, but there were wyverns in there, so I had to kite them away and circle around to go back in there and grab the artifact. Whilst I was in the wyvern lair, I was able to spot this one freaking 65 fire wyvern egg. I took it, of course. Do I really have to tell you what I did next? Um, I ate some cheese. No, dummy! I hatched my 165 fire wyvern egg and waited for it to mature. That's what I did. On the day of day 76, our fire wyvern had fully grown. Flame was the name. I then turned my attention on building a little greenhouse for myself. I also needed a place for us to get water. Turns out that I was far from any other water source, so I went with building some water tanks and placed those down. I also crafted a couple of crop plots and then went ahead to make sure that my piping was on point. Ah oh yes, day 77, I needed a dung beetle. So I went to visit the wyvern lair once again. Not for a wyvern egg, but for a dung beetle. Who would have thunk? Anyways, I searched and searched and searched and eventually was able to find a dung beetle. Took it back to base and I started the taming process. Oh wait, I also needed the poop dino. It was much later on during the night that I remembered and went out to find myself the poop dino. I was able to spot one during the night and took it back to base where I proceeded to tame it. Day 78, I was off to the snow once again. This time I needed to find another high level duty, a mate for mine. UT. I just really wanted that imprint bonus for the UT that I was going to use for the boss fight. And I did find a high level UT. And again, I tamed it without using a taming pen. You can see I was really confident with my taming gear. Maybe just slightly lazy as well. I don't know, but it worked. I got the UT down and was able to tame it. Oh yeah, day 79, I started breeding my UTs. I was looking to get the best stats out of the pair of UTs I have. This will greatly increase our chances of surviving in the boss arena. There was a plan here. Day 80, well, I just hanged around base for today. Besides, we had a couple of things to do around here. And I needed to do them. Went ahead and gathered some resources, checked and stocked up on my greenhouse things. I then went out for a little meat run to get some food for my dinos. 
and started working on some kibble for one of the dinos that I wanted to tame. For the rest of the evening, I watched over my little baby UT whilst it matured. Day 1, speaking about kibble, we needed eggs to make this certain type of kibble and I didn't have the dinos to do so. I then had this crazy idea to turn this certain part of my fence into a little taming pen. It sounded like a really cool idea, so I went ahead and completed this build. I also went off to get a couple of cards placed them in my taming pen and in a couple of minutes we had some dinos that would give us the eggs we need. It was day 82 when I went out to collect some resources by harassing some of those beavers for their freaking dams. We needed cementing paste and a whole lot of other stuff as well. We needed those to craft our industrial cooker. Yes, that's what I wanted. Good job. Day 83 and 84 I took my Rexes out to level them up by taking out everything and anything I could find. Also there were a whole lot of alphas around our base and around the map so we went out looking for them and taking them on, hoping for a whole lot of levels. I also went and had a little fun, I mean what would it be without having a little fun in the mix. We took on the brood mother, it didn't really stand a chance against my Rexes, we just gobbled her up. Day 85, yes peeps, this is why I was making the kibble to tame this specific dino right here, a creature, the Gigantopithecus. Up to the Red Reds I went to grab myself a high level Gigantopithecus and plopped it in my little taming pen back at base. Now my thoughts was because this mod has some armor and attachments for the Gigantopithecus, I really wanted to use them in the boss fight, so I was thinking of half of them being Rexes and the half of the army being um, Gigantopithecus. Yeah. Well, once I've tamed the Gigantopithecus, it was clear to me that I would struggle in the boss fight. Oh well, at least I got a new pet. This is really cool too. It has its own attachments. Nice. Well, with the news of the Gigantopithecus not making the cut with the boss fight, I had to go with my backup plan. And that was to add more Rexes! Day 87, now with our first half of Rexes all leveled up to the best that I could and now healing, it was time for me to go and level up my UT. And again, we went out just finding anything we could take out and also going for those alphas. Oh yeah, one more thing, whilst looking for dinos to take out, I spotted this beauty! Another high level Giga! And guess what? Seems like it could be a good mate for the Giga I have! Guess I need to go and fetch my raft. Day 88. Now that my raft is in close proximity to the Giga, I try to carry the Giga into the taming raft. Of course, this was a difficult thing to do as the Giga tends to go for everything it sees. But eventually, we did manage to get the Giga into our raft. And then from afar, I started to trank and knock out this Giga. Darn it! And then got it some prime meat and watched it tame up. The next few days, I focused on breeding my gigas. It took days because somehow even with the boosted stats I had, it took a very very long time for them to hatch and to mature. This was crazy. I know I'm not boosted and official settings are even crazier. But that's what I'm talking about. I'm using some boosted stats here and it took like almost two to three days. This is crazy. Also, the other thing I wanted to do was use them in the boss arena. That was my purpose for breeding these gigas. Yeah, I soon found out that you couldn't take gigas into boss arenas. Ah, oh, frick, man. Alrighty, we are at the home stretch here, guys. Basically, the last few days here we just used to prep up for the boss fight. There was so much to do, yet so little time. I think I left this one a little bit too late here. But anyways, let's go for it. Day 92 to 94, I went ahead leveling up my Rexes, taking out as much alphas as we could possibly find, and racking up all the levels we could possibly get from these fights. Day 95, I needed to get the last couple of items items for the boss fight, so we went out to get them. I needed some Sarko skins, I then visited the Wyvern lair to get some Titana Boa Venom, and lastly I needed a few more Allosaurus brains. Ooh.
crazy stuff. With all the madness that was going on trying to prepare for the boss fight, I decided to take a day off and have a little fun, you see. Considering we couldn't really take our gigas into the boss fight, I decided to take them to a boss fight. Crazy, right? But uh, you guys know that we already did a boss fight with our Rexes. We took on the Brood Mother. Well, I decided to take on my gigas to take on this Brood Mother. It was very obvious to see why we couldn't take them into the boss arena because they like totally annihilated this brood mother i mean it didn't even have a chance to breathe that's how crazy it was day 97 i gathered a whole bunch of resources to graft a whole bunch of cryopods to transport my dinos to the yabby day 98 last minute preps around the go i needed to get a couple of things before we could go to the boss fight i also went ahead to grab a couple of med brews and checked up on my rexes making sure that they were healthy and ready for the boss fight topping up the last bit of levels that they had day 99 it was time for me to take all of the stuff i needed and all of my dinos that i needed for the boss fight and ship them on over to one of the yabbies yeah there was a lot to take over so did take a while but yeah peeps we're ready we're ready to take on the Valgaro bosses